Welcome to our Good Friday service. It is good for us to meet even though we are dispersed. We can't gather together in our building, but we can celebrate and remember and thank God for all that he has done on this day and we remember his sacrifice. As we go through the service, all the words that you'll need will be on the screen. So let's take a moment of quiet to prepare ourselves as we prepare to understand again, understand um, in a fresh way what God has done for us on the cross. So eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love in humble hope and fear. May we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we're going to sing together how deep the Father's love for us. Hear the Gospel of the Lord according to Luke. 
At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law met together and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he heard that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have had found no basis for your charges. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time, he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will it happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, 
one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you were king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. As the soldiers led Jesus away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed Jesus, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breast that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And then they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. This is the word of the Lord. Having heard the narrative of the passion that Jesus went to for us, let's watch this video from the Miracle Maker about Jesus' death and let us pray while we watch it, give our lives to him and thank him for giving his life for us.
So having watched that video, we are humbled but by all that Jesus has done for us. And so let's turn to him, let's turn face onwards to him and say we're sorry for those things that we have thought, said and done, but turn our backs on him. So though we have accepted the gift of life made possible by the death of Jesus, we are still human beings who each and every day fall away from God and fail to be the people he wants us to be. But we remember the words of Paul. God shows his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So sure of redemption and reconciliation through the death of our Lord, let us know, now confess and ask forgiveness for the sins we know of and also ask God to show us and forgive us those wrongs that we haven't even noticed. So let's pray. The religious leaders thought that they were right and closed their minds to God. We too have made up our own minds and not have listened to you. So Lord Jesus, 
please forgive us. Pilate knew what was right, but feared for his position and listened to the crowd. We too have thought more of ourselves than of you. Lord Jesus, please forgive us. Herod wanted to meet you for his own amusement. We too have not made you first in our lives. Lord Jesus, please forgive us. The crowd called crucify again and again. We too have often said things that must have hurt you. Lord Jesus, please forgive us. So Jesus who went to the cross to make a way for our sins to be forgiven, let us receive that forgiveness as an open gift from him. So may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of his Spirit all our days. Amen. And so as forgiven people, we're going to praise God's holy name in the words of When I Survey. Let us pray. We who believe 
are made clean by his sacrifice and as a result are now able to enter eternal life with him. God sent his only son into the world so that all who believe in him should not die but have eternal life. So we give thanks to God and praise him for all he has done. O oh God, our Father, you loved the world so much that you sent your only Son to die, that we might live through him. For his willingness to forgive all that was done to him and all that we do now, Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. For his willingness to forgive all that was done to him and all that we do now, Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. For his promise of heaven to all who are truly sorry and ask for forgiveness, Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. For the example of his compassion to the very end, Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. For his sharing in our physical suffering and long for his healing touch, Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. For his entering into our mental sufferings and loneliness, Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. That he completed his work and did not turn away even from the suffering on the cross. Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. For his triumph over death, and the certainty of eternal life. Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. Father, as you loved us, so by your grace help us to love one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As our time together comes to an end, a final prayer and a blessing. You believe that by his dying, Christ destroyed death forever. You have been crucified with Christ and live by faith in the Son of God, who loves you and gave himself for you. May he send you out to glory in his cross, to live no longer for yourselves but for him who died and was raised to life for us and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen.